Hello, this is a tutorial on Keycloak Part 3, specifically on OAuth clients. In this tutorial, we will configure an OAuth third party client application. We will register the OAuth client in the Keycloak administration console, then we will demonstrate OAuth grants. In Keycloak, an OAuth client is different than a regular Keycloak application in that the OAuth client is not necessarily secured by the authentication server. Instead, the OAuth client is solely interested in obtaining temporary access to the user's resources. OAuth clients also have less privileges than applications. The user must explicitly grant consent to any privilege it is delegating to the OAuth client. In this tutorial, we have a browser application that is going to act as an OAuth client. When the user visits this OAuth client application, the user's browser will be redirected to the Keycloak server to perform a login. After logging in, the Keycloak server will ask the user if they grant temporary privileges to the OAuth client. The browser will then be redirected back to the OAuth client application. The application will obtain a token from the Keycloak server, then perform a background call to the backend database to display some data. This backend REST service is the same one we configured in part two of this tutorial, so you'll need to build on top of those examples that you've already done. So let's get to work. The first thing we're going to do is register and define our OAuth client application in the Keycloak administration console. So we'll go to the left menu item here, OAuth clients, click on that, we'll get to the OAuth client list page, and we'll click on the add client button here. We're going to give a name to this OAuth client, call it, we'll call it third party. The next thing we are required to specify is a redirect URI pattern. This pattern is the set of all valid URLs of the OAuth client application. In this particular case, our OAuth client application is running on the same machine as our authentication server, so I can actually specify a relative URL here. And that's what I'm going to do, OAuth client slash star. If my OAuth client application was on a different machine, I would need to specify the full qualified URL, like something dot com slash OAuth client star. But since it's not um, running on the same machine, I mean, since it is running on the same machine, I don't need to specify that. I'll click Save. One thing that we have to configure for an OAuth client that we didn't have to for a regular Keycloak application is the client scope, the OAuth client scope. Scope is the set of privileges, roles, that the OAuth client is interested in and is allowed to request access for. Implementation-wise, only the roles defined in the OAuth client scope mapping will be stuffed into the OAuth client's access token. So if the user has a role mapping of both user and admin, and the OAuth client only has a scope mapping of user, the access token the OAuth client obtains will only ever have the user role permissions attached to it, and the OAuth client can never act as an admin. To be able to set the OAuth client scope, you go to the scope menu item. We'll click on that. By default, an OAuth client does not have any scope mappings at all. So if this OAuth client were to request a login and an access token for a particular user, it would have no roles, no privileges attached to it. You can grant a full scope mapping for an OAuth client by enabling the full scope allowed switch here. So once I've done that, uh, the OAuth client is allowed to request any privileges that the user might have, but we don't want that. Instead, we only want to provide a scope mapping for our OAuth client that has only a user privileges. So I click on user here. I assign the role to the scope of the OAuth client. So even if the user has both an admin and a user role mapping associated with it, 
When this OAuth client requests a login, a temporary login and access token from the authentication server, the OAuth client will only ever be able to have the user role associated with it within its access token. So it can never act as an admin for this particular user. Okay, so we have uh, finished configuring our OAuth client. The next thing we need to do is actually deploy and build our OAuth client application. Like part one and two of this tutorial, the code for our OAuth client application is in the unconfigured demo example directory. So if, if I do a listing of this directory, you should see a list of example projects. Let's bring up this code for these projects in my favorite IDE IntelliJ. The code for our OAuth client application is in the third-party directory, in the third-party project. This project is a Maven servlet Java application. The first thing I need to do is I need to go to the webinf directory and create a keycloak.json file. If you remember from part two of our tutorial, we had to create um, a keycloak.json file for our applications. OAuth clients need the same exact configuration file. So within WebEnv, I'll create an empty keycloak.json file. If you remember from part two, the keycloak.json file has some basic information about the realm that you want to be authenticated with. It specifies the realm name, the URL, the realm, uh, the public key, really that, that sort of configuration information. What's great about Keycloak is that uh, if you go to the admin console, you don't you can get a template for this particular Keycloak.json file. So let's do that. Let's go to the Keycloak administration console. Okay, now I'm back to the Keycloak administration console, and I want to go to the third-party OAuth client that we configured earlier. And if you see the the submenus up here, um, the one we're interested in is installation. We're going to click on that. And this is the keycloak.json configuration you want to cut and paste from. We're going to copy it here and then cut and paste it back to the keycloak.json file. Click Save. Okay, we're ready to try this out. But the first thing we need to do is actually build the application. So if we go to the third party directory under our configured demo and click and type maven clean install jboss as deploy this will compile and build and deploy the application to the keycloak authentication server now usually this um, this deployment here will be deployed on another machine your authentication server will be on a different machine than your applications but in this particular demo everything's running on the same machine okay so everything's deployed now um, all we have to do now is actually try out the demo so let's do that okay the auth client demo is under this URL HTTP colon, HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 880 OAuth client I'll hit return here. And uh, you see here we got this really simple page. When I click on this link here, uh, the OAuth client is going to redirect me to the authentication server, the Keycloak authentication server. I'll be asked to log in and I'll be asked to grant privileges to the OAuth client. And when I'm redirected back, uh, this OAuth client application will get a token and use that token to pull data from uh, a REST service in a secure manner. So let's click on that pull data link. I'll type in my username, B. Burke. You see it's saying uh, temporary for temporary access for Realm demo is requested by the third party application. So I'll click I'll type in my password, click login. The next thing that Keycloak is asking me for is te temporary privileges. So Basically, it's saying temporary access for demo requested by a third party. 
do you grant these access privileges, specifically user privileges? Now this little string here, um, if you remember from part one of our tutorial, we created a user role. The description of the user role is what is going to be displayed right here. So if you want this to display something different, uh, go into the admin console and change uh, the description of the role. But anyway, so I'm granting permission, so I'm going to click yes here. And now I'm brought back to the OAuth client page, and the OAuth client has obtained an access token from the server, and it made a background call to get this product listing right here. So that's it. That's that's how OAuth clients work. That's how they're configured. That's what it, what they look like in the wild when you actually have them deployed. Hope you enjoyed this part of the tutorial. Um, there's a few more tutorials online for different features of Keycloak. If you want to take a look go to our document pa documentation page on our website. Thanks. Bye.